Tanian is the organizer of this festival. Yeah, let's put it up for that. Let's keep it close. She's from Kansas. She's from Wichita, Kansas. Please put your hands together for Helen Riker. But a little about me, I am the mother of four. And as the mother of four, I think it makes me qualified to tell all you people that don't want to have kids, good call. <laughs> It's not that having kids is all bad. Obviously, there's a lot of great things about having children, right? You just gotta really want them for when the bad stuff happens. Like when your seven-year-old son Googles naked girls. I wasn't prepared. I thought I was gonna have a few years before it became disgusting, right? I thought that happened at like 11 or 12. I knew it was gonna happen because he was gonna grow to be a man. And they're all disgusting, so. I didn't know what to tell this kid. There was no father in the home. I panicked. I sat him down. I was like, look, buddy, a lot of those women have been abused and they're on drugs. They're just not happy to be doing that. He said, well, they look pretty happy in the videos. <laughs> oh, man. For some reason, I thought you were just looking at pictures, think about videos. So I just put a password on the computer. We never talked about it again. Then when he was 15, he graduated to sending and receiving naked pictures. And I don't know if you know, it's, it's child pornography, it's a felony, they're, they're cracking down on kids. But he's 15, he knows everything, he's not listening to me, right? My best friend's like, just take his phone and see what he's been up to. I was like, I don't want to invade his privacy like that, you know? Then one day I found his phone laying in my bathroom. Okay, you have to understand, my son had their own bathroom to be disgusting it, so I was pissed that he was even in there. But I was like, hey, I'm going to look at your phone, game on, privacy invaded, it's cool. I open it up, bam, picture of a stick. <laughs> I was awash with different emotions. I was angry, he was in the bathroom, I was angry, he took the picture, but at the same time, I was like, that is my boy, you know? <laughs> I'm just saying he doesn't take after his father, that's all I know. <laughs> also, I'm 41. I've been online dating since 2006, so I've received a lot of these pictures, and his dick pics go, it's pretty good. You know, he had nice lighting, good angle, perspective with the sink for size. Obviously, I was mostly angry, though, obviously. So I go and I find him. I'm like, is this a picture of your dick? Did you take a picture of your dick in my bathroom? Was your bathroom not appropriate for the production and distribution of child pornography? You had to use my bathroom. So I broke the camera on his phone, and we never talked about it again. That's my parenting advice. When in doubt, just wait it out. There's no reason to talk about it. That's what therapists are for, okay? They went to school for a long time. They got a lot of student debt. Don't be a selfish asshole. Don't talk to your kids. Uh, do any of the when you're, any of the gentlemen here play video games? Or do you know you're an older crown? Do uh, you have boys that play video games? Do any of them just pee at whatever's laying around instead of going to the bathroom? That's what my sons did. Yeah, a cup, a yoga container was full to the brim. You know, I was like, we have cats, you can't be doing that. Yeah, not that old. My favorite, though, was a two liter that had obviously been visited more than once. It was a Mountain Dew two liter, too, so I was real confused. You know, I was like, what did I buy a two liter of Mountain Dew? Yeah, oh, that is uh, not Mountain Dew. It's not walking around my house with a two liter full of urine, right? I'm like, who pissed in this two liter? Neither of them went into it. I was like, look here, we're the only three people in this house, okay? I didn't pee in all that big. How did one of you two? They wouldn't admit to it. So I was like, oh, it must just be that disgusting ghost we have in the house. They don't tell you that when you have kids and they become teenagers, you automatically get a disgusting ghost. You know, they leave dishes in the sink and shit in the toilet without flushing. And in my house, piss in two liters. Pretty sure we had the ghost of Howard Hughes, is what I'm saying. Had the ghost of Howard Hughes. Um, now I, uh, you know, as a mom of four, like, obviously my worst fear as a parent is to lose a child, right? But really, like, for me, it's to lose all four at once. And if you don't think that can happen, talk to me after the show. I'll tell you a hundred different ways it's possible. Um, but I think, like, I could still turn around. I could find the silver lining because I'm kind of competitive. So when I go to those meetings for parents who've lost children, they're all crying about losing their one kid, I'm gonna be like, oh yeah? I lost all four at once. I win! <laughs> I do have a competitive advantage now uh, over parents that have uh, like grown children. They all complain about how they're 
assholes and they spend all their money. And I go, yeah, when your daughter, when your daughter was, uh, was 20, was she with a man for the last three years that's 45? Yeah, a man you'd broken up with two and a half years before? Ha <laughs> ha, I win! I probably could win who has the worst ex competition as well. Because if your kid or your ex did anything worse than that, you're probably not going to admit it in public. I also named her after me, so that made it real easy for him. She's also named Helen. Yeah, you didn't really have to change that up in me. Plus, they can still use those Helen and Andy towels we had made. Yeah. It's all right. Everybody relax. Everything's fine. It's over. It's been a couple years. We're, we're a big, happy family again. Everything's happy now. But all my darkest moments, I did think maybe I should have taken her father's suggestion and had that abortion. I didn't obviously do it. I have four children. That's obviously not a choice I made for myself. Instead, I just had a bunch of kids I couldn't financially or emotionally support and raise them to be terrible human beings. You're welcome. That was a much better plan. No, they're not terrible. They're all great, especially my one of them's really good. Anyway, <laughs> one out of four. That's not bad odds. I uh, I have um, I miss when they were little. Um, it's it's really weird with four kids. Like, they're all just such different personalities, you know? It's all right down to, like, the pregnancy and the birth. It's all just completely different experience. Like, with my first one, I was 18 when I had her. I just was amazed that I was a mother. I just stayed up all night looking at her. I just couldn't believe that I had this baby. And then about 2 a.m., I decided to go see what this little bundle of joy had done to me, right? And I go in the bathroom. I'm checking stuff out. I'm just like, oh, no. That's not right. That is sticking out a good four inches. <laughs> oh no. So I call my mom and I'm crying. I'm like, Mom, it's never, you know, it's never gonna go back in there. And she's like, Yes, it is. The body's very resilient. It's gonna go right back in. It's gonna be fine. I was like, But it's never gonna look the same. She's like, You just pushed a human out of your hoo ha. Why would it look the same? Why would you think that? Then my second kid, uh, with her, I was basically in labor for two weeks. <laughs> so I was really, like, really happy when she was born. I was so happy that when they put her on me and she peed all over me, I'd never been so happy to be peed on in my life. <laughs> I was like, she peed on me, everybody. That's like the worst thing she's ever done to me in her whole life, is peed on me when she was born. Um, then my third kid, he was 11 and a half pounds and 23 inches long. Yeah, so I gave birth to a monster, uh, you know. The nurses came from all over to look at him, and, uh, but who doesn't love a fat baby, you know? My hula, that's who doesn't love a fat baby, my hula, all right? Now that, that fourth one came just 15 months later, so I didn't have to push him out. He just, he just flew out like a greased up butter you know? Think about that next Thanksgiving. <laughs> but that's probably the worst part about, like, as a mother about having children and giving birth and stuff is the damage it does to your body, especially to that region. It's like, like you ever gone to the store and got like the manager special meat, like the clearance meat, and you take it home but you don't eat it right away? I mean, it's still good, you can still eat it. It's just got some brown around the edge. <laughs> it's kind of like that. <laughs> now I miss when they were little and we used to go on family vacations. Uh, like in 2012, we went up to uh, Colorado. We go up into the mountains, and there's this like family of mountain goats, right? And so we decided to pull over and take a look at them. It's just me and the four kids. And this, you know, nice normal family pulls over with this, you know, the mom and the dad and their minivan and their and the 2.5 kids and their I Love Jesus stickers and their Smart Kids stickers, whatever those say. I've never gotten one. Um, so we all get out together and we're walking over there, and there's there's the mom goat. And she's you know breastfeeding the the baby. The lady walks up with her son, he's about five, she's like, look, Billy, the mama goat's feeding the baby goat. And just then the daddy goat comes up and just starts going to town on the mama goat, right? And Billy's like, what's that other goat doing? Like, that's just, that's just daddy goat giving mama goat a hug. My nine-year-old son says, look, mom, they're fucking. <laughs> and she gives me that look that good moms give bad moms. You know? I'm like, well, that's what they're doing, lady. I your kid, it's fine. I mean, I can give that look to moths too. It's just that you probably need to call Child Protective Services on that. But uh, I just like to think of like your next holiday, little Billy sitting on Grandma's lap and Mom and Dad hug in the kitchen. He's like, look, Grandma, they're fucking. <laughs> Taught that kid a little lesson that day. I, uh, I uh, just, my one year wedding anniversary just happened. You don't need to clap, we're getting divorced. Um, I said
said it happened, not that we celebrated it, okay? No, uh, you know, we just, it is, it's okay. We just had different personalities, you know? He was a weak little bitch, and I don't like that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's a real, that's been a big problem in a lot of our relationships. I don't know, maybe it's me. Um, no, it was, a, we made, we got married because of, because of money. We saved taxes by getting married. <laughs> we didn't have a wedding. Um, oh, yeah, it's my third marriage. Uh, third time, not a charm. Um... Not a charm. Uh, we didn't have a we didn't have a wedding. I didn't really know how to like like theme that wedding. You know, they like the the invitations would be like we crunched the numbers. Come on down. You know? <laughs> we have gift bags, which is like a red light stapler and some pencils in it, and calculator. The placemats would just be a printout of the spreadsheet of the cost analysis of married versus not married. The cake would just be like an adding machine with a bride and groom and smart business wear. You know, so we just skipped all that. We went to Colorado to get married because in Colorado, it is very easy to get married. I've done it twice. <laughs> you don't need an officiant. You don't need a witness. You just go in. You give them $40. You sign the paper. You're married. <laughs> like, that should be illegal. That is not right. There's a lot of mentally ill people out there that make mistakes. Um, now it's two hundred and fifty dollars to get divorced. It's not right. Um, got the papers signed. Just haven't filed them yet. Um, I was kind of excited, like when I I thought my antidepressants had killed my sex drive, right? And when I found out I was going to be single again, I was excited. I was like, man, if I don't care about sex, I won't get into a relationship. It'd be so productive, right? I'd get so much done. And then as soon as I was single, I was like, man. Whew, there sure is a lot of dick out here. What? Where was this dick always been here? I have been in a coma for three years. What is going on? So it turns out I just didn't want to fuck my husband. It happens, you know. I uh, no, I was pissed. I was so pissed that I that I was interested. I'm pissed that I'm even straight. You know, like I really like. If, I mean, I like women and everything, but I don't fall in love with them. If sexuality was a choice, I would be a lesbian, okay? Because men are the worst, you know? They're the worst for me. Like, the closer I let a man get to me, the more likely he is to murder me, you know? I'm better off doing heroin. And it'd be cheaper with the kind of men I date to just buy heroin. I, uh, I, don't, I don't know why. I wish I was a lesbian, because I love women. I love female comics. I love talking to women. I love hanging out with women. But sadly, I love dick, you know? <laughs> I'm not happy about it at all. Um, so I really did try to make it, I tried to make it work because I didn't really want to be single again. I didn't want to be back out here dating at 41. It's not fun. Uh, back out in the world of sexting and dick pics and toilet pics. That's right, I said toilet pics. Now, I'm betting most of you don't know what that is. A man online offered to be my toilet. I think you're still confused. He wanted to eat my shit, okay? That's what's left out there. So if you're in a relationship or a marriage, make that shit work, okay? You don't want to be back out there again. It's not good. I was actually pretty good at the sex thing. I didn't think I would be, you know? I wrote some stuff one night that I was like, that is some good stuff. Like, I don't even need to text back. It's a new thing I'm going to get going. It's called text debating. Now just text yourself. You know what you want to hear. <laughs> In my sexting adventures, I learned there were two kinds of men. There's a gentleman sexter, what I call the caddy sexter. Now the gentleman sexter is not going to send you that unsolicited dick pic. Caddy sexter don't care. He'll send them all day, all night, from all sorts of angles, you know, just hoping one gives his dick some personality. <laughs> All sorts of locations, too. It's like a reverted Roman note commercial. You got the classic in the shower, you know, his work bathroom. I've never understood what that's about. Don't you have things to do? Um, Disneyland with some Mickey Mouse ears. Maybe like the Eiffel Tower with the top hat and a monocle. Yeah, this has just got that one on. <laughs> Man, I love a good alcoholic. Uh, recovering, full 
hold on, whatever, it doesn't matter. I'm not sure why, I just love a mess. Um, I've thought a lot about it, and I thought, I'm thinking maybe it's because, like, when, when you're with an alcoholic or drug addict, and they, they do have a rock bottom, they get to that point, they just give you complete control of their life. They're like, I can't, life, help me. And you're like, all right. The problem is you build them back up, right? And they're like, hey, I'm doing real good now. I'd like to have my life back. And you're like, <laughs> no gipsy backsies, that's mine now. And then the fighting happens and you break up. And you go through uh, what I'm calling, what I call the new dick phase is what I have when I have a breakup, but the new dick phase. Uh, my motto is, it's a dick and so are you, but I don't give a shit because it's new. That's, that's, that's my motto when I have a breakup. No, I do I live alcoholics. I've thought about maybe this time I'll just go hang out at some AA meetings. Maybe hang outside of rehab. At least that way I'm catching them on the upswing, you know. I thought about offering my services too, kind of like a drug sniffing dog, but like an alcoholic sniffing person. Basically, if you have any family or friends, male, female, whatever, it doesn't matter to me, you just bring them over, and if I'm even remotely attracted to them, it's probably time to have a talk. <laughs> be like, Jeff, buddy, we've been concerned about your drinking for some time now. Well, Helen here says she'd like to lick your balls, so we think it's time. <laughs> we think it's time you got some help. I am into the ladies. Um, I'm into having sex with the ladies. Um, I, I don't really date very many women. Like, they don't hit on me, and I just am terrible at trying to pick women up. But I think it's because I'm, like, sexually ambiguous. Just like my hair, and, like, sometimes the way I dress, say, yeah. She's definitely a carpet muncher. My face just screams cocksucker. I just can't, I just can't hide it. In my defense, I have to suck a lot of cock when I'm single, you know, because I don't cook, I don't clean. I don't like to buy my own meals, you know. It's real to do. I, uh, I recently learned, though, that you can get gentle to herpes from unprotected oral sex. Yeah, I didn't know that until I was 38. Uh, Kansas sexual education is great. Uh, yeah, it goes in your mouth and boop, out your genitals. Yeah, so I spent a lot of time home alone, eating ramen. It's cheap, and it may be disgusting, but it's better than sucking on a condom, you know. Or so I've heard. I don't know. Sounds disgusting. They make flavored condoms for that reason, but it still doesn't seem to make it any better. I, uh, they say that it's one in, they say one in four have herpes, but that's if you dip it down to 12 years old. If you, at 30 and above, it's half. Half of them have, but once again, if you are in a happy relationship or even mediocre relationship, just stay there. Settle. You're not going to find better. It's not better out there. If they don't beat you, just accept it and just, I'm telling you, you don't want to be back out there. You're going to get herpes and die alone. It's, my best friend, she's like, you know, she's like worried about, she's like, she gets wine drunk sometimes. She's like, I'm going to die alone. And I was like, yeah, and you're probably going to have herpes when you do it. <laughs> a lot of my friends, they date younger guys. You know, whenever they introduce you to them, they're like, yeah, Chet, here's 24, but he's real mature, though. He's real mature. Like, yeah, maturity. That's why you're dating Chet. All that raging maturity. Sure. <laughs> Uh, my last train wreck before my husband was a little bit younger, uh, he was he was 32. Unfortunately, he had the maturity of a 22-year-old and the penis function of an 82-year-old. Leave it to me to try to go younger and have to try to score by after I am. While we're on the topic of erectile dysfunction, I once had an ex blame me for his failure to launch. Yeah. He said I was so intimidating that it was emasculating and it made it difficult for him to get an erection. I said, well, put me on a little bitch. <laughs> It's not my fault you're not a real man. <laughs> Emasculating. I don't know what that dude was talking about. I'm a lovely, nice person. Until you make me mad. That's all it is. Just don't make me mad. I am a sweetheart until you piss me off. It's very easy. Just don't piss me off. Um, I tried I tried cougaring when I was 38 because uh, I felt like it was finally time. Because it's half your age plus seven. You know, so I dipped my dating age down to 26 and went on after that young sweet D, you know, like, like you do. You know, and I managed to catch you one. It's a little difficult for me because I'm like a fat, lazy cougar. So I have to go up like a slower wounded prey. You know? I'm, not gonna, 
I'm not chasing after these kids, you know? But I managed to catch me when I did. He's 26, and I texted my friend. I was like, I'm going to do it. I'm a cougar, right? And then I found out this kid was three days out from a two-year relationship. And I was like, no wonder I can catch you. You just had your heart stabbed, your balls ripped off. <laughs> At the time, my, my little brother was 27. My daughter was 20. So, like, my mom big sister mode kicked in. And I found myself consoling him, giving him advice on how to get her back. I was like, oh man, I can't even do cougaring, right? I mean, I still fucked him. <laughs> My fat ass was tired from all that chasing, so I had his face like a barber left him, you know? I, uh, uh, I'm 41 now, so that was a few years ago. I, I did attempt cougaring again, uh, but I don't know how it works. Are you supposed to up the age as you go up? I don't know. So I was like, well, we'll just, we'll just try 26 again. And no, no, it's 30 now. I, uh, I had to up it. I went out with this kid and, uh, we went to like a coffee date, and then we decided to go to the Looney Man and watch a comedy show. And we're talking, and I made some, I made some cougar mistakes. Uh, I mean, I asked too many questions. We talked too much. That's the problem. You, if you're gonna be a cougar, don't talk to him. Just, just get it done. Um, <laughs> now we're talking, and he's talking about how the age difference wouldn't be cool with his people, uh, you know, especially his mom. And I'm like, you still care what your mom thinks? And then. <laughs> Mistake one, I said, how old is your mother? <laughs> Don't do that, uh, she's 43. I was like, oh shit, she don't live here, does she? I might know her. <laughs> Thankfully, she's in Hutchinson, I was safe. Um, and then we were just like, let's not talk about that, let's go inside, you know? So we go inside, we're sitting there, getting a glass of wine, he's gonna buy me a glass of wine and stuff, we're talking. And and uh, we were talking about the age thing again, you know, and I was like, you know, my daughters are 22 and 20. It would probably be more appropriate for you to date one of them. Yeah, mistake number two. Uh, and then I sealed the deal by saying, yeah, my younger daughter looks a lot like me when I was younger. Yeah, and then, yeah, 30 seconds went by. I was like, you know what? I can't do this. And he was like, yeah, yeah, me either. So now it's 30. 30 is the bottom. I'm not horribly picky. Uh, I did have a boyfriend for about six weeks. I'm really burning through them. I can't. Uh, I can't keep them around very long. They just. They make me mad once. And I'm like, leave. Um, I'm, I'm just. This isn't fun anymore. I'm leaving. That's pretty much how. Like as soon as it's not fun, I'm out of there. But um, it's, it's like talk about like I went to the boyfriend store. You know, I did. Like up in Nebraska, they got a really good outlet store for it. You know, and uh, I go and I'm just like, look, I'm not horribly picky. Okay, I just. 30 to 50, I don't even care, I don't care about ethnicity, just a man, 30 to 50, you know, it was like five minutes till close, and they're like, we don't really have a whole lot left, you know, I'm like, can you just please not be an alcoholic, <laughs> I'd really like to try that once before I die, and they're like, well, all we have are recovering alcoholics, I'm like, ah, shit, all right, I guess that'll do, um, can I just get like a hint of crazy, I still need a little bit of crazy, because it really does spice things up, you know, crazy guys fuck this. I don't know if you know that. It's not just crazy women. Crazy guys fuck it. And then, like, I'm also crazy, so that's really hot. I don't know if we need to, like, like, is there, like, a porn category for that? Like, crazy porn? Like, schizo on schizo? <laughs> Maybe a little bipolar gangbang, you know? If there's not, we should get that going. I'm taking, um, I'm, I am going to be doing some tryouts later. Um, so, you know, hit me up. We'll see how that goes. Um, I wasn't even trying to get a boyfriend. I was just trying to fuck a redhead. Because I never had, you know, that new dick. Uh, I have a theory about redheaded men. It's that no matter how good looking successful they are now, they went through an extra awkward phase in middle school. You know, everybody does, but redheaded boys especially get a divorce. For some reason, they all have big ears and bad teeth and acne and they're pale. And so it makes them try better in bed, you know? They're more, more giving. I'm also, this is an experiment. It's gonna take a lot of, you know, work, and uh, I gotta get a wide uh, populace. You know, I gotta try a lot of different redheads to see if this is a real theory. So I'm, I'm trying out for that too. So if you know any, you know, good-looking redheaded men, send them my way. I have an experiment for them. Um, no, I, I could actually, you know, with the younger thing, uh, I could actually have a very successful dating life as a cougar if I wanted to, because young people hit on me a lot. And I don't know if it's the whole cougar thing, if it's because they think I'm younger, but I know they don't know what they're hitting on. Like, I may have the skin of a 40-year-old, but I'm the bladder of a 30-year-old who's given birth 
with you? Four children. A little lesson for you here. When some women get older, especially when they've had four kids, they can develop a slight incontinence issue. I'm not talking about anything crazy like a full-fledged diaper. It's more like a pee pad. It's a pee pad. Like, right now I'm wearing a pee pad. I'm kidding. I'm not wearing a pee pad. I'm really broke. I just got some paper towels stuffed in there. <laughs>